You're fearless. You are completely fearless. You, you even went after Nelson Mandela, which I thought, what's going after Nelson Mandela like? That's like going after, and all I can think of was like going after Nelson Mandela. <laughs> I mean, yes. he's pretty as close to untouchable. Well, Nelson Mandela, to himself, to his great credit, and he's such a gracious, interesting man, uh, the first thing he said to me when I said to him we were chatting, um, you know, well, people regard you as a saint, you know, and he said, I, I'm not, no thanks, <laughs> I don't want to be a saint. Uh, and he, I think that probably upset him more than some of the other questions I asked him, that the suggestion that he was uh, a, a saint. Um, I, Nelson Mandela and the African National Congress promised the majority of South Africans a lot of things and what I did was I hoped a job of journalism bring out the promises, read them out to them and say what happened um, and <laughs> you, it's a very simple formula. If you do that, you're, you're li likely to upset people who haven't kept their promises. I think we find that in our own lives. Um, and um, <laughs> it, 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 I sort of got a smack wrist, so to speak, from Nelson Mandela, though, um, uh, though we parted in, in very good spirits. Yeah. Let's talk about the title of the book, because mm -hmm. that's really you know, freedom... Uh, and it next time. Yeah. Therein, I think, lies the, the hope in these struggles is that these are people who glimpsed freedom or the possibility of freedom, but events have conspired or they've been denied it. Um, and, um, but they've got close to it. And one must not... Um, uh, underestimate the the power and the importance of them getting close to it. In South Africa, they got rid of the apartheid regime. Yes, there are a lot of problems, and yes, life hasn't changed markedly for the majority of the population. But that first important stage happened. And I frankly didn't think it would happen in my lifetime and I was banned from South Africa for many years and I, d I didn't think it would happen. And it happened. And it was a, an absolute joy to go back to South Africa and find a member of the majority actually at the immigration desk or even to meet Nelson Mandela and so on. So, you know, you, I suppose m what I'm saying in this book is that you can't... Um, you can't ring bells and play Santa Claus and say, well, it's all fine, it's all happened, because it's only critical examination of any situation that allows, um, that allows people, I think, the space to move forward in. How do you not become a total cynic? Well, I am a cynic about power, yes. Um, but I'm not a total cynic. I've, never, I've been in too many places... Uh, and situations to and to have been rewarded with the actions of people. It's how you it's how you think about things. If you want, if you think about the world from the top down, you'll be total cynic because you you basically reflect the views of what you're being told. But if you think about it from the ground up, it's a bit more confusing. But uh, you're likely to see things differently. Where in the world do you look now and go, okay, here's a place where the people are starting to win and are going. It looks like they're going to win. That they're going to, they're going to, you know, get something approaching their fair shake. Well, where in the world? I would say Latin America. Hugo uh, Chavez is Latin he's America. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hugo, Hugo, in Venezuela, in Bolivia, in Ecuador, in Argentina, where I was filming last year. The rise of, I mean, the way it's represented in the West, of course, is uh, it, it, it is a distortion that, that somehow there's new strong men rising. These strong men have huge democratic majorities which is a bit of a problem for that image but uh, I think it's, if you again, if you go to ground level and you see the 
the social movements, as they call the popular movements that have produced some of their more charismatic leaders, what I thought was that there was the, 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 the debate about what you do about democracy and accountability and getting basic services to people. I think that was so much more advanced than it is in the West and that we have a great deal to learn from that. I'm not saying that it's produced perfect situations, far from it, but it's a debate that started. It hasn't started in the West. I love the book, and I, I know lots of people that I'm going to pass it around to and recommend it. But, you know, we're the choir. Yeah. You, know? you worry yet sometimes you're just preaching to the choir? Well, it's a pretty big choir. <laughs> well, that's uh, good. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, delighted that the, the choir has run to millions. Look, most, most human beings, and every decent poll is showing this, most human beings are revolted by George W. Bush, Tony Blair, and the rest of this gang that have caused so much mayhem. Because most human beings are basically decent. So that's a pretty big choir. The book is Freedom Next Time. I've been speaking with the author John Pilger and Freedom Next Time, published by Black Swan and distributed in Canada by Random House.